Hi everyone, I'm Sam Diaz and welcome to the very first episode of Scoring with Sam. Today I'm going to be showing you five essential steps to scoring a major car commercial. Here we go. Step number one, get your facts in order, okay? Get everything you need to get from your director, from the filmmaker, producer, whoever is making the movie or film or commercial or whatever, right? Because the thing is, if we start off on the wrong foot, if we don't have all our facts straight, this is going to lead to a lot of problems down the road. And so that's, you know, that's everything from rates to deadline, to temp track, to musical references, to the feel, everything. Make sure you get all the details from your director. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Asking questions is so important. Like, okay, what are you looking for stylistically? Do you want me to hit any points, any emotional points? Um, you know, is, is, do you have any musical references? Do you want this to sound like this? How married are you to the temp track? Do you like the temp track? Do you want something different from the temp track? These are all valid questions. Once you have all that in order, once you have a grasp on what you need to do musically for the piece, then you can start. Step number two, once you start writing, make sure that your ideas are simple, okay? Have a simple motif, a simple theme or something to get you through the piece, okay? You don't want to have too many random ideas. You don't, in fact, you don't want to have really any random ideas. You want everything to sound cohesive and unified musically, right? Unless it's a piece where you're jumping from here to there or, you know, you're in different parts of the world. But even then, you want to have an idea that sort of carries you through all of that stuff. I'm going to show you what I mean right here. Here's a simple idea I came up with for this piece. So I'm going to turn off the video right now so you can just hear the, the idea. All right. Super, super, super simple idea. And you're going to hear that I use this idea throughout the entire piece, throughout all two minutes of this car commercial. Why? Because it creates, like I said, cohesion. All right. And it not only creates cohesion, it makes it sound like all one piece, but it just makes it easier when I'm coming up with ideas or coming up with different moods. Because this piece has a lot of moods that I have to hit without the course of those two minutes. And if I have a little simple idea that I can just, you know, change maybe the harmony or maybe a couple of notes to, you know, make it sound a little darker or a little happier, or a little quirky or whatever. It just makes it so much easier down the road. So keep your idea simple, whether it's a couple of notes, whether it's just a small theme, have one central idea that's not only simple, but also very strong and it's memorable. And then just, you know, and it's also just the right feel for the piece. Step number three, make sure you have a strong structure in place. Now, what does that mean? Well, you basically want to have a sketch of what you're going to do for the entire piece with markers, with tempo changes before you start orchestrating or exploding, you know, your idea to different instruments. I'm going to show you right here what I mean. So if you look at this, um, I have a piano sketch for almost everything here. Now, a lot of it's missing here because I actually copy copied my piano section to a lot of these other parts here. All of this was just one piano track. Before all of this happened, I had one piano track with a, with a tempo track which you'll see here. So for example, here, um, I wanted to hit a musical moment here that the director asked for. After I had that, I orchestrated it for all the different instruments and it's not like this. And you're going to see the exact same thing here where I scored it on piano initially with a tempo track and everything. And then I exploded it to the different instruments to basically reflect what's happening on screen at that moment. So look at the tempo track here. And as you'll see, there's a dip here to hit this point right here. Um, and it's reflected in the piano. Right here. Right? So then when I orchestrate that, it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
And it just made it easier because there was no guesswork. I knew where that hit was supposed to happen. I already had the tempo track in place. So all I basically had to do was just orchestrate it, okay? Step number four, orchestration and mixing. So after I do my piano sketch, I like to orchestrate everything and start with just the uh, essential instruments that need to stand out. So in this case, I needed this instrument to stand out more because this is the main instrument that's gonna carry us through. Okay, so what you just heard was the ukulele part, which was derived from the piano part. And what I basically did was just I played it over in the ukulele because it just has it's, you have to play it a different way in the piano. And then I started writing other parts to accompany that, so like supporting instruments. So another ukulele playing another counterpoint part here, which we'll hear, which is this. Now when we go into another section here, which is supposed to build up because we have a beautiful drone shot of the car driving uh, through the countryside. So originally in that part, I kind of just did this. That's not the most exciting thing, but here it goes with the rest of the instruments. All right, that's actually the same idea, except I orchestrated it in such a way that makes it feel grander and I actually added parts to kind of just drive it, okay? And basically what I did was I added a kick, it's sort of a kind of an EDM thing. Strings. Spiccato strings to be more exact. I added, uh, uh, Bulgarian, uh, I think Bulgarian voices, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and uh, and all the meanwhile, I still have this idea going. So it just goes to show that I keep that idea going, even though I have all this other stuff sort of like accompanying it. And actually it's not the focus so much anymore. I think the choir is actually the more, more of the focus. That was my intent to make the choir more of the focus in that section, but, you know, just to give it a more of a color change. Now, when it comes to mixing, it's a very tricky topic and I'm gonna make other videos on it, but just to keep it sort of simple, if you have instruments that don't really require low information, then just get rid of it. Vice versa, if you have instruments that are more low information, don't really need high information, get rid of it, okay? Make, carve out space in your EQ for other instruments to fill up those gaps. So for example, if we go in here and we look at my pro channel here, um, I have a high pass on this, I have a high pass on actually almost all these guitars, I have a high pass. And this one, I have a low pass as well because there's a lot of like annoying high information stuff that I didn't need here for this guitar. I have a, a high pass here with some frequencies that I took out. And then, but if you look at the bass and stuff like that, mm -hmm, I have a little bit of a high pass, but I'm letting all this stuff come through. And then for my sub bass here, I'm just uh, letting this information come through because it's more of a subby uh, instrument. And then another thing to watch out for is your levels, okay? You want some instruments to stand out more than others. And then instruments that you don't really want standing out or that are basically just getting in the way of the melody or whatever, you can either just drop them or just lower them a lot in the mix. Sometimes I drop instruments a lot because I just don't need them at that moment. You don't need to have everything playing at the same time. Why? Because then you're, if you're gonna exhaust the listener. You don't wanna exhaust your listener with all this information being thrown at you all at the same time. So be very wise with not only your orchestration but with your mixing and with the way instruments come in and out and the levels of them, all right? You don't want things poking out too much when they're not supposed to be poking out. Just make sure you're making very smart choices when it comes to orchestration and mixing. 
Step number five is delivery. Now, I like to send my music along with the video because the thing is, if they can see how the music works against picture, it gives them a clear idea of what works and what doesn't work, as opposed to just the music or, and it just makes it troublesome for them sometimes if you just send them the music and then they have to put it in Premiere because a lot of times they're not the editors or whatnot. So make sure that you send the music with the video when possible. And if not, then discuss with the director what they would like from you, okay? So this is how I send it to them. What I did was I made a bus, a separate bus of all my music, all the instruments routed to this bus right here called Music Bus. And what I did is I automated it. So if, you were, if I were to open this up right here, you'll see all the automation that I created for the music against the picture. What happens is in Sonar, I can actually export video and music at the same time. So it makes it easier for just to send it all in one go. So I'm going to hit read here and you're going to hear that the music is mixed to the dialogue. All right, we're all packed. Let's go. Coming, coming. I am thrilled we're getting away from all of this and roughing it. Come here. Roughing it. So this makes it so much easier for the filmmaker when they watch it to get a better grasp of the music and how it works against picture and everything. And then they can give you like proper notes and details and all that stuff about what they don't like. Okay, this is not really the emotion I'm going for. Or this is not hitting this exactly at this frame or whatever. And it just makes everybody's life easier and it makes you look more professional. That's very, very important. So delivery is super important. Now, as far as formats like MP4, QuickTime or anything, make sure you discuss with them what they prefer because people are on different configurations and whatnot. But MP4 seems to be like generally what works most of the time and what people prefer. And also just making, ch when you make changes and stuff like that, keep track of all the changes you make, do, di do different save versions and stuff like that. Because sometimes they'll go back, they'll like something you did before and then you already deleted it and it's too late. So make sure that when you deliver something, save it, back it up and make different save versions, okay? All right, guys, that's it for today. I know this is a super quick video and it's not very, very super detailed. It's just to give you basically the five steps that you can use for scoring a car commercial. And if you have any other suggestions for future videos, please feel free to comment or message me directly and ask me about that. And I'll try to put it out there for you or help out in any way I can. See you in the next episode of Scoring with Sam.